Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome to show to Deep South Texas, where we're visiting a, a good friend of mine's place just outside of Ensenal, Texas, which is about 35 miles north of Laredo, Texas, up Interstate 35. And this is typical Texas brush country. Now, the first time I came out here, uh, I introduced y'all to uh, Sandy Leindecker. Sandy is a friend of mine. She's uh, also a professional veterinarian. And Sandy and her partner, Donnie, they were in the whitetail business and made a name for themselves big time in the whitetail business. And most people want to be deer farmers or are deer farmers. Well, Sandy and Donnie made a decision that kind of changed direction of what's going on on the ranch here. And so this time I come down and I'm super excited because I know that they don't have whitetail deer in their pens anymore. They've made a big decision and what they're doing now is raising exotic animals. Today's show is going to cover why they got out of the whitetail business and how much they're enjoying the exotic business. My name is Keith Warren, and this is Deer and Wildlife Stories. So anybody who raises animals like we do, okay, whether you're a deer farmer or whether you're an exotic farmer, you gotta kinda be a shade tree vet. The reason why is you have to be prepared to be able to help these animals out. Every animal's gonna need help from time to time. Being a shade tree vet isn't near as good as being a real vet, and Sandy is a real vet. And I mean, if you visit Critter Care Veterinary Clinic in Laredo, Texas, you'll find out that Sandy, she's a rock star. But Sandy is unlike any veterinarian I've ever known because she works on such a variety of animals. Welcome to Critter Care Veterinary Clinic. I'm Dr. Sandy Leindecker and we're ready for adventures any day, any time. You name it, we treat it. All creatures, great and small. I'm a veterinarian, 29 years now, graduate of Texas A&M University. My first love is exotic animals just kind of do a little bit of everything here. Oh, we also have a baby bobcat. We're bottle feeding it. That came in as a rescue. A couple weeks from now, we'll be a full-fledged kitten running around the clinic. Dr. Leindecker is really, really good with them. She goes above and beyond, not only for her patients and her staff, but also for her clients. And I really enjoy this part. She's huge in her community. It's part of what makes her a great vet and also just a really great person to know and to work with. You can't imagine what comes into this clinic every day, something new. For example, today we saw a possum. We're fixing to trim hooves on a javelina. I'm trying to stick him with this needle and push the syringe. The javelina is a very dangerous animal. They are very aggressive. I've had plenty as a pet, believe me, but they're very one person, very protective. They've got big tusks. And so we need to trim his hooves. We just have to be very careful. We have to sedate them and do it safe for the animal and yet safe for us. We do this a little bit like this every day. Tomorrow it's a raccoon, squirrel, turtles, from a mouse all the way to an elephant. Elephants has only been one. That was plenty. <laughs> and I know it kind of sounds funny, but people around here call Sandy Dr. Doolittle and it's real easy to see why. I guess I got famous because I come out on the commercial. So I just like to do fun stuff and I care and I want to treat whatever I can help. Makes it an adventure. We are not an everyday vet here. You name it, we got it. I own Cactus Country Ranch. We have an exotic ranch here with some other species as well. My partner, Donnie Fruge, runs the ranch and my ranch is where I come out to relax, enjoy nature, and be myself. It's a beautiful morning here, April, South Texas, and I'm so excited. Keith Warren, my good buddy's on his way out so we can check out some of the wildlife and exotics that are out here. You order this cloud cover? Absolutely. It's good to see you. <laughs> there we go. Hey. Sandy is one of my favorite people ever, and the reason why is because she's real. She is the perfect example of a veterinarian, somebody that grew up loving animals. They love all animals. And it's obvious in everything that she does. And so these exotics that are living down here on this piece of property are so lucky because Sandy Leindecker oversees it all. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by MVP Whitetails, Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors, and Rafter P Construction. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming Channel on YouTube and Facebook. So where's Donnie off to now? He's out darting uh, a Nubian Ibex so that we can trim her hooves. We have a Nubian Ibex nanny that 
Their feet are super long. We had to wait until they had their babies before we could knock them out safely. So there's babies in the pens? There's babies in the pens. So if you're gonna be a whitetail breeder or an exotic animal breeder, you're gonna to need to have yourself a dart gun. They're actually called projectors to project a device called a remote drug delivery device because from time to time, you're gonna to need to medicate your animals. One straight ahead of me. And this dart gun that Donnie's got is 25 years old and it's a new dart. Okay, now that we've darted the nanny, we'll give her around 10 minutes to go down. And as soon as she goes down, we're gonna pick her up, take her over to Sandy, and she'll be all right. And do you trim the hooves kind of like a deer? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Like, actually like a regular goat. Think about it out in the wild. They're running up and down those yeah, cliffs. Rocks. Right now, her right side's up. And we don't want her to bloat, so we'll put her with her left side up. Let's go to the house. All right, so this is an Ibex female, and boy, look at her feet. Oh my gosh. We just trimmed them not eight months ago. Really? You got your tools here? Yes, we got horse hoof nippers here, and then these are designed for like trimming goat's feet. Their feet are much harder than a normal goat. And that's pretty normal. I'm trimming this part so that we can allow this hoof to start closing again. And then we gotta trim it flat so she can actually walk flat on it in a normal position. Now we got to go for the front feet. They're the worst. So we're done trimming her hooves. We've got them as close to normal as we possibly can. And now all we need to do is go wake her up and well, let her get out to walking again. That really is pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, is. so I'm gonna ride with y'all out to the pens because I want to see her get up and I want to okay. see everybody else that she's living with over there. Okay, you got it. Let's go. All right. I'm giving her Banamine right now for pain and inflammation. And then I'm giving her an antibiotic. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to reverse her. OK, Mama. He's already oh, trying to wake up a little bit. There she yeah. goes. Look at that. <laughs> She's still a little groggy, a little drunk. That's pretty dead gum good right there. I mean, she got up, bam, just like that. That's awesome. So tell me, like, these other eye bags she got in here, how many do you have total? We have about. 15, 20, I think. Really? We started off with four females and a male, and then they have singles or twins, mostly twins every year. We have babies that were born this year, and we have some that just had babies last week. And so April down in South Texas, and it is a, it's real pretty green. And I mean, these animals are absolutely beautiful. So what kind of market is there for these animals? Well, right now it's a breeder's market. Which means it's means good. Means it's good. Means people are buying them to breed, and that's what we mainly want to sell them for, is for breeding, because eventually they'll go for a stalker type market. In other words, for people that want to put them on their property, just want to have the Ibex on their property. Yes, and this is a nice, small little animal. They're easy to keep in a small acreage. Ours are extremely gentle. That Billy right there, how long do you think his horns are? Saying 30. And how old is he? <laughs> He's a five-year-old now. He's not done growing. No, really? not by a long shot. You're not regulated by Texas Parks and Wildlife for these animals, are you? No, sir. That's got to be a blessing. Yes, sir. Okay, so if somebody wants more information about coming out here and seeing not just the Ibex, but any of these other animals, you got Sable and Gimsbuck, you got all kinds of exotics. Yes. Give them a phone number on how to get a hold of you. 956-744-0774. So Donnie is literally out here every day. Yeah. Okay, he, he's out here every day. Meanwhile, Sandy is uh, in Laredo at Critter Care. And yeah. she, she's taking care of all kinds of critters. Yes. All right, so uh, can we go see some sable now? Yes, absolutely. All let's right. go. Let's go. Well, she ran off and let's go. I want to see some sable. All right, let's go. <laughs> Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Big Time Whitetails and Exotics, L.E. Fence, the Texas Deer Association, UVC Power Sports Tractors and Outdoors and new dart. Deer Wildlife Stories will be right back. Right back. Closed captioning is brought to you Closed by Closed captioning is brought to you by deer Advanced Deer Genetics. If this doesn't look like Africa, I don't know what does. It does, I mean, doesn't look it? Look at this. This is beautiful. It look does. at the sable out here. I mean, anybody that travels to Africa 
especially big game hunters that travel to Africa. We see sable often, but uh, it's not unusual to see people, exotic breeders, that raise sable here. And how many do you have, Sandy? We have about 30 now. Wow. There's a lot of them in here. Okay, mm -hmm. you've got, uh, boy, look at that one male. He is old. He is dark. No, he's five years old. That's all? That's all. So I learned the bulls are like deer. When testosterone is low, their horns are growing. When testosterone is high, their horns slow down in growth, and they turn black. I mean, it looks like Africa. You're going to have uh -huh. predators. How do they do with the predators? Well, you figure they're used to hanging around lions and hyenas and stuff. We haven't lost a single sable baby to a predator. There is no way a predator stands a chance. And if you look, if you watch that one female, she's keeping an eye on her newborn baby. So, is the market pretty good? I mean, people, people want it? Uh, yes, they do. The cows will sell probably between forty-five dollars and $55,000. Whoa! Seriously? Seriously. And if you have a really good bull and you, can, you have a cow that's bred, uh, they've gone as high as eighty thousand dollars. We've oh. sold them for about fifty thousand. One of the big reasons why people are transitioning from being a whitetail breeder to being an exotic animal breeder is the regulation that is not placed upon the people that are exotic breeders, but also the money that is involved. We've sold one. We have a lot of people wanting to buy them. We just haven't been ready to turn any loose. We wanted to get our herd built up before we were turning them loose. And think about this. People that are maybe in the deer business think that uh, there's money to be made in deer. It is a breeder's market right yes, now. Yes, it is. And there's no maintenance. You never have to touch that sable. It is absolutely amazing when you wind up looking at these animals and how little maintenance they are. Many of them are no maintenance. They just put them out on the pasture and they just thrive but how much money they're worth. So if you're interested in the exotic business, you can get a hold of Donnie by calling what number? 956-744-0774. Boy, those are some beautiful animals and they're so classy. They are, they are. Exotic animals for the most part these animals are just calm, period. And they, yeah, they spend some time with them, but it's not the time that you have to spend like with a white-tailed deer. But as far as some of these animals go, they do bottle raise some animals. These Nalechua are very endangered. We need to nurture these animals. We need to raise them, take care of them, versus these animals becoming extinct. So conservation, that word gets thrown around a lot these days. And I want to tell you all something. I think that it's really important for us to explain to people that it's our love of the animals that not just draws us out to hunt them and to raise them, but to take care of the habitat where the animals live. Once you lose habitat, you'll lose the animals forever. And once the habitat's gone, it's gone. Whether it's in Africa or whether it's in South Texas. Now that's a Nile lechwe. Yes, sir. Okay, now, so that's a male, isn't it? Uh-huh. Yeah. How old is he? He's very young. He's a little over a year old, year and yeah. a half maybe. He's, yeah, he's young, but uh, is he all alone in here? No, he's got his girlfriends in here too. So those girls are out someplace else? Yes. Okay, but he's over here saying hi. But... As he ages though, he'll also get a white spot. Mm -hmm. That mane, that golden mane will, will get less and he'll have a, a big white spot like where his shoulder blades are in that area. So the market for, for Nile Letchway, is it pretty good? It's very good. They're very few. They're endangered. Really? Very, very few. And so you take a look at the habitat here. It's absolutely beautiful and the weather is perfect for them. And do they do pretty good here? Yes. And then if you notice there's a, a stock tank right there that they, they are uh, like a lot of water. Mm -hmm. We've had 100% offspring. They're a little bit harder to come by than the reds, which is why we went with them. And uh, I know like with some of the other exotics, for example, the Dama gazelles, we're breeding them and they will ship them to Africa and they're trying to restock some of the areas that they're native in Africa. I think that is so cool. That is a story that is not being told by a lot of people. What's that white thing just went back behind him? Those are Dama gazelles. Really? Uh-huh. Do you still have that Dama that you raised when mm -hmm. I was here last time? Yes. Bottle raised? Yes, I do. Well, let's go see some. You got it, let's go. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you by Record Rack Deer and Elk Feeds, the North American Deer Registry, New Dart, CC Bar Whitetails, and the North American Deer Farmers Association. Now for some great information on fencing from our friends at LE Fence.
Hey guys, it's Ron with LA Fence here. Right now we're getting ready to pound some pipe into the ground, start building our braces. This first pipe right here is gonna be one of our gate hinge posts. So we're gonna drive this pipe extra deep. Uh, we're gonna go probably six feet in the ground just about. Uh, all we're doing is using a hydraulic king hitter attached to the back of a three point on our tractor. Uh, so right now he just leveled to make sure he's hitting it square. And all he's gonna do is just gradually hammer this pipe into the ground until we hit resistance. So here in a minute, it's gonna keep going down pretty quick, and then it's gonna hit the ground and just start going real slow. That's when we hit resistance, and then when we have solid ground that the pipe's into. How many Dama Gazelle do you have? I have about a dozen. Man, they're so beautiful. I mean, look, they're not bulky, they're lanky. I mean, look at the long neck on them. They're very, very elegant looking. Elegant, that's mm -hmm. a good word. And look at it eating the, out of the tree there. Yeah, they're browsers, they have a long neck so they can reach up into the trees. Mm -hmm. So are most of these females? Yes, there's three adult males, one breeder, two younger ones that are already mature. And then we have uh, one baby male, one, he's young. So I grew up in Texas, and uh, Texas has had exotic animals for a long time. And it's like in the deer breeding world. What do you want to do? Be a deer breeder, or do you want to produce stalker deer? So there's two parts of the whitetail world. There's two parts of the exotic world. You want to be in the exotic business, or do you want to be in the super exotic business? We choose to go into the super exotics because they graze and eat the same thing as your regular exotics do, but they're a little more lucrative. We have a lot of the vegetation here is very similar to Africa, which is their native area, so they do very, very well down here. What amazes me is how much you love animals, your passion for the animals. I've seen you bottle feeding squirrels and bobcats and damas and, and your whitetails, and I think now you're not in the whitetail business anymore, but you've really gone full-blown into the exotic world. Yes. And I know that was a big decision for you to get out of the whitetail breeding world. Now, you do have whitetail on your ranch. Yes. There was a reason why she really kind of focused on the exotics is because the regulation on the whitetail deer has gotten so stringent that it wasn't fun anymore for a lot it, of people. It was a lot of work. It was a lot of difficulty, you know, and I, I want to come home and relax and enjoy these animals versus having to knock them out sedate them, and we had close to 200 deer at any one time. But see, you don't have to do that with these no. exotics. Are the damas pretty easy to raise? They're a little more difficult than like the sable and the gemsbuck. They're a little more delicate, mm -hmm. and they, they have a variation in color too. If you notice, some of them have a, a little more white, and then mm -hmm. if you look at that breeder male, he has only one horn, but yeah. he's really orange, has a lot of that dark rust color, a lot of variation, very popular. So what just walked in there with him? That's a Grant's Gazelle. Really? Now they look totally different. Yes. So value-wise, talk about a Grant's Gazelle versus the Dama Gazelle. On these exotics, the market is in the female because the female is producing the offspring. Right now, the value is about $35,000 for a female. Oh my goodness. Damas, when you breed a Dama, do they have one offspring? Only one offspring. Only one, and they breed every year then? Once a year. And what about the Grants Gazelle? I believe that they probably only have singles as well. I bought one EWA. Hey, that's the Exotic Wildlife Association. Mm -hmm. Just like in Texas, there's the Texas Deer Association and the Deer Breeders Corporation. Mm -hmm. There's also the Exotic Wildlife Association. It represents exotic breeders like Sandy. But basically every exotic breeder is going to be a member of EWA and there's a reason why. Because we're all working together to help each other out. That's correct. These are beautiful animals. So you've got some gims luck. Yes. Let's go look at some Gimsbach. You got it. I'm driving this time. All right. The reason why I was driving is you're kind of crazy woman driver. <laughs> <laughs> the advice that I'd give you if you were interested in uh, getting exotic animals would be find somebody that you can trust. Visit some exotic ranches. Talk to the people, make friends with the people because you're gonna need some help from time to time. You're gonna need to have a mentor, somebody that you feel the same way about that, that I feel about Sandy. Look how weary they are. Very oh, nervous animals. animals. Yeah. Gimsbuck, right? Mm -hmm. So those are in the antelope family and, and both the males and females have horns. And the females tend to get longer than the males for some reason. The face on them, I mean, look at them. Aren't they beautiful? Like they they just mask. really are and they are paying attention to us. Look at that. You know, in white-tail deer, most breeders actually artificially inseminate. That's correct. Okay. Do you do that at all with exotics? No, we haven't. 
So it's all just natural breeding. It's all natural breeding. And the Gamsbuck are such easy keepers because they're used to the drought and desert conditions in Africa. So even in Texas, in South Texas more so, we have a lot of drought conditions and they stay fat as ticks even in the drought. And so you've got just so many different exotic species. And folks, if you're interested in getting into the exotic business, okay, Sandy can help you. Give Donnie a call if you want to come down here. And uh, his number is? 956. 744-0774. And Sandy will help you out big time. You'll be in the exotic business like that. So Sandy, thank you. You're welcome. One of the biggest things that I admire about uh, exotic breeders and whitetail breeders is their passionate commitment to take care of the animals and do the best for the animals. And it's for that reason that I love coming down and hanging out with Sandy. Sandy's my vet, but more importantly, she's my friend. Can I give you a hug? When I hug Sandy, the warmth it's there, I mean, it's real. And that's the reason why people at the clinic love her. Her customers love her, the animals love her, and I love her. And y'all are my friend for watching. I appreciate you watching. If you're watching online, you know what to do. Leave a comment and all that kind of good stuff. Make sure to subscribe to our channel. If you're not watching online, head on over to the Deer Farming channel. My name's Keith Warren, and I'll see you next time. For more videos on deer farming, check out the Deer Farming channel on YouTube and Facebook.